Hey, y'all. Welcome back. I want to tell you a story today about Dogo dependability. And it is true. I love to hunt. I grew up. I've done it my whole life. That's all we've ever known. But we depend upon these dogs to get a job done. I have people calling me all over the South. These hogs are a nuisance. And after the trappers trap all they can trap, after the thermal guys shoot all they can shoot, there's still hogs out there tearing up golf courses. They're in Aunt Susie's backyard. I cannot tell you how many instances of uh, somebody calling me saying their house dog went out to bark at hogs in their backyard at nighttime. It kills the dog. These are a real problem where we live. And so people hire us and government agencies, farmers, all kinds of people call us to come help them with this issue. And we depend upon these dogs to go in the brush and get these hogs out so we can take care of this issue. The dependability I want to talk to you about uh, today about is a dog in particular I called Eleazar, or his nickname was Z. And so when Z was born, his mother was Carqueja. Carqueja was a full litter mate sister to Cardo. Cardo, world champion of work. Incredible male. You can go on my website and read about him. I posted a Facebook post, I think, of him running in slow motion. If not, I'm going to do that soon. I can't remember. But he was an incredibly athletic male. Full litter mate sister to him was bred to Tai. She began to have complications in her pregnancy. We had to take her in for emergency C-section. Only a couple of puppies made it. The female's fine. Z was one of those males. He grew up incredibly beautiful. And my goodness, he was a specimen to look at as a dogo puppy. I began to hunt him about the age of seven months old. And then on a hunt in Texas, he came up missing one time. I checked my Garmin. Um, he, he, before this, he had been doing nothing on the hunt, but staying beside me and eating summer sausage and crackers and letting me pet him. And it triggered one day and he caught a hog all by himself and he was gone for about 20 minutes. When I got there, he was give out. Um, he held it until we got there. So that's how his story began to take place. But by the time he was 18 months old, here's the kind of dolls that they turn into. He walked by my side everywhere that we went. He did not mind to run a hog all by himself and go catch it all by himself. I liked him near me, though, to help me in my personal thing with all the hogs near me. I was out in a swamp one day where the beavers had dammed up a big slough and flooded it. And it was essentially a, a duck hole because the water was up all the time. As you guys know, the, the timber eventually dies and then it falls over and the Mississippi River comes up and floods these places. And the silt from the Mississippi River, that mud is the best fertilizer known to man. So once the trees died and the canopy was open, the sunlight comes in and it just grows up thicker than nails. And so there's several hundred acres of this flooded slough now with downed trees every 20 feet on top of one another, big brush tops, and now horrible briars and switch cane growing up through these trees. It's an absolute nightmare, um, impassable by any vehicle. It's just walking only. So this particular instance uh, was last year, early January, and we began to bathe these hogs out in this horrible flooded beaver slough <laughs> gone mess that they were in. And so we walked through there, and I began to dispatch hog after hog Z, was jumping down in from tops of brush piles down in the bottom, holding these hogs. He was at times underneath the log, reaching up, holding the hog. He was straddle logs, holding hogs. We killed some sows that day north of 262A. Those are big uh, feral sows, no listed blood. That's straight Russian hogs. Those are big Russian sows. The hunt goes on and on, and this lasts all day, and I had walked all over, and so we're getting into hour seven and eight of me walking through this back and forth, in and out, and it is so thick, it's hard for me to catch all of my curs out of it because with that many hogs, the curs just keep relaying and getting another, getting another, getting another, and they're waiting on me. Well, the curs, all they have to do really is hold them at bay and, and run, and so they're really, really tired from working the pigs, but not near as tired as me and the dogos are of holding them and dispatching them. So I'm catching bay dogs and I'm leading them out and it makes it on. We've got three dogs left 
and I see the hog and they're they're after a big boar. And I'm thinking, my goodness, last hog of the day, it's getting right before dark. And I'm beginning to say, Lord, I need to get out of here. You know, there's no cell phone service. I'm all alone. It's me and my dogs and my Can-Am. No radio service. I was out of range for our walkie talkies. Nobody knows where I'm at. And I cannot leave until I get all of my dogs out. And I had three dogs in there and they're running a big boar. And that's the last thing that you want to do is catch a big boar at the end of the day because he's fresh. I'm tired. The dogs are tired. I did not want to walk back in there again. And we had killed, I don't know, uh, maybe a dozen. I can't, I can't recall. Just, it's just me and one set of dogs, maybe 12. I don't remember it. That's not a, not at all out of the, ordinary for me to kill 12 before lunch or in a day by myself. So I began to talk to Z and uh, another one of my dogos I had, and I was telling him, I said, we got to go one more time. I said, we can't leave. We've got, <laughs> we've got the rest of our team in there and, and darkness is approaching and they were so tired. I remember them not wanting to, uh, <laughs> to get up and leave, but I said, okay, I'll go in there. But the moment I get up and I start walking in there, I'm not leading them. They get up voluntarily and they come in there behind me. And so we walk in there, the hog breaks and goes another 300 yards deeper. And I'm thinking, mercy, please stop. Please hold up so we can get you. We get back there. Um, I begin to hiss on in there. As Papa says, it was Z and Koshetta. They go in there and catch the boar. I dispatch it. Now completely exhausted. I snap. Uh, my last, uh, no, I didn't snap anything. My bay dogs actually laid down. They were so tired. Z and Cosheta, they both lay down. They're so tired. So there's five dogs and me, and I'm sitting down, and we're sitting around this board. And I said, we got just enough time to make it back to the buggy and get everybody, you know, unsaddled, unvested before we get out of here. And as I get up, you know, nobody, I, you know, there's, I can sit there about five minutes to rest, but. If you sit there and make it past five minutes, you start getting really tired. You start your muscles start getting stove up, and those dogs don't mind a bit to sleep in the woods where they're at. They're exhausted, and I promised them uh, a good meal if they would just get back. And I'm talking to them. Come on, y'all, let's go, let's go. And so I know that if we stay out there, it's going to get too cold, and our lives are at risk. So we get up against all of our physical senses, and we start walking out of there. And it's some six, eight hundred yards of walking over treetops, climbing over brush piles, wading briars, and it's going to take us all the rest of the day to get out of there. Mud up about this deep, and so as we start walking out of there, and I'm tired, I start talking to him, come on, come on, and right about the time I get out of sight, I'm turning, I'm talking to him one by one. They get up, and they start walking with me, and by the time we make it back um, to the buggy, everybody was there right at dark. They come, they jump in their holes, I un- I take all of their gear off. I give them, I had this much, I think, of a summer sausage left and some crackers. I split it up six ways between those last dogs and we ate it, turn on the radio and I began driving out of there. We were miles and miles and miles back in the swamp. You find out what you have in those instances. I depend upon those dogs, not only to go and let's get this job done, but I depend upon them to hold these dangerous boars safely so I can dispatch them and they are counting on me and I am counting on them. And you never know what you have. The worse the conditions are, the more you're going to find out what you have. A couple of weeks later, we get after a very, very large board. He's sitting right here. Uh, this is Z's collar uh, that's, that's hanging on this board. Um, and look at his teeth right here. We got after this hog. And he swam a ditch and it was about 25 degrees that morning. This ditch was about 30 feet wide and there was a swift current in it. Now, back in my younger days, uh, I would have swam the ditch and where we were at, I had no way to get heat to me. And if you've listened to uh, my story about me in the icy pond, my grandpa told me that was over. He said, don't ever do that again. He said, I reckon you know that if you died, you'd be missed. And so I stood down there on the edge and they swam it and caught this big board. And uh, Z had it caught. And dogos are not ride them cowboys. They're not, hey, look how good he can hang on. They'll grab it, put his nose in the ground, and they'll hold it there until I get there. He won't leave 
a catch circle of about five or six foot in diameter. So I either swim this ditch and get really cold and risk hypothermia because the wind was howling across these fields. Or I get in my buggy, I drive all the way out, drive all the way around, cross the levee, and it's going to be about an extra 30 minutes of driving. So I studied it for 15 minutes, decided I don't need to do that, walk back to the buggy. That takes another 15 minutes, drive back around there. So an hour after he caught it in a in a match against a hog, a mature boar that was in a horrible mood, uh, when I got there, Z, the hog was laying down and Z was laying down and Z had a hold of the hog's ear, which is not hurting the hog. It's just holding it still. And the hog was give out and he couldn't move and Z was tired, but he had a hold of the hog's ear. And so I pulled up and I started walking through that switch can. And I was looking at my Garmin and I said, he's in here somewhere. And I was looking around and I see Z there on the ground and he hears me walking and his tail starts wagging and that switch came. And I see that he's got that boar. And I said, oh, baby. And when I said that, he jumped up on his feet and that hog uh, tried to run. And he sat down just like a heel horse and stopped him again. And I went in there and dispatched it. This is a very dangerous hog. Um, and he held that he held that joker still for an hour. And that switch came. The reason why I tell you that is because people ask about how good a watchdogs are they? How good are they with kids? How good is, are they going to protect my property? And if you buy a dog that has never been and the lions have never done anything like this, you really don't know what they're going to do because story after story after story and generation after generation of breeding like this, you know, if our dogs are in your house and somebody knocks on the door, they're not going to pee in the floor and go get underneath the bed. They are going to be ready to protect uh, you and your family in a world today that's a little bit crazy out there. And they're going to be able to do whatever you want them to do. And you can depend upon them. That's the, the point I'm making. You can depend upon them if you need them. Because where I come from, dogs were not just pets. Dogs were not just part of the family. They helped us work. They helped us work the farm, provide food. And we depended upon them. And I know that that's foreign to a way of life, to all the haters out there that talk about, you just do it for this, you just talk, it's foreign to them if you grew up in a in a big city. And so, but it was a part of what we did uh, growing up and we needed them and we depended upon them. And you can depend upon these dogos that I raise. I say you also can, you can depend upon, and you know, I keep the scriptures right here and you can depend upon the Lord, call upon him in time of need. And he'll be there to help you <laughs> at a far level superior than I or the dogos could ever do so. Guys, thanks for tuning in. There's a little bit about Z. His bloodline is solidified here. It's those three little girls out there in the kennel that I asked y'all to help me name. And Jojo, those are all sons of Z that will continue on throughout uh, the days here at Circle S. Happy hunting. Until next time, may God bless you.